Hey, what's going on, guys? My name's Corey from Stitch It International, and welcome to the debut episode of The Insider, where we sit down with some industry professionals, up-and-coming people in the industry. And when I say industry, I'm not just talking about just embroidery. And I know that that's what most people think of when they think of Stitch It. But we also do all sorts of apparel decoration, um, where whether it's white toner printing, transfers, anything like that. We cover a little bit of everything. And one of the goals that we wanted to accomplish whenever we started this podcast was to talk to some people who have really made waves in the industry. Um, today's guest, I think that a lot of you guys probably know him. He's been doing embroidery for over 30 years, I believe. I'm sure that you know he'll be able to fill in a few more details. But uh, today's episode is going to be about somebody in the embroidery industry, and he's somebody that has a lot of respect and Definitely somebody that if you've been in the embroidery industry for a while, you've probably seen or at the very least heard his name. So uh, I won't take up too much time. I'll let him kind of give his background. Uh, I would like to introduce today's guest, Bill Garvin. Hey, everybody. Uh, Corey, thanks for the invite. Uh, of course, this is my first podcast, so we're going to see how this goes. Um, as far as up and coming, you're 100% correct. I've only been doing this for about 32 years now, so... Uh, just like everybody else, uh, I figure, you know, we're going to learn till the day we die. Oh, yeah. So I've still got a lot to learn. There's a bunch of new technology and everything out there in the industry. So it's a never ending learning curve. Um, I love teaching. I do a lot of seminars and stuff around the country. So I have been doing this a long time. Uh, Actually just finished uh, eight hours of teaching today. So it's been yep, just finished a eight hour beginner class for people. And believe it or not, we spent uh, no joke four hours on threading needles and bobbin case uh, you know <laughs> i know four hours probably sounds like a lot but over the course of the past 32 years it's just a drop in the hat and so it's second nature to you but you, you do teach a lot of people that they've gotten into this they've seen the products they've seen the, like some of them the potential of money to be made and so there's all sorts of things that draw them in but then these machines they're very complicated there's a lot to them and so for any of the listeners or viewers and they're thinking, man, how can you spend four hours on bobbins and thread? But there's so much that goes into it. So why do you think that it's important for people to learn the basics before they just jump right in? That's just it. Too many, <clears throat> excuse me, too many people in this industry, they get in too big of a hurry. And what it boils down to is that like the class I'm teaching this week, um, these are people that are brand new. They literally have purchased their machine. You know, one customer's had it a year, used it twice. They're, they're scared of it. But they haven't been to the training class. They really haven't put in the time and the energy and everything needed. So, and why it's so important is like I explained to them in class this morning, we're starting with the basics because on average, I'm actually a service company, okay, on BT Tech Services. Our bread and butter is actually repairing machines. And me and my team on average, you know, we're East Coast, we're based out of Tampa. Um, we work a lot on East Coast, Caribbean, things like that. Um, we service on average about 80 customers a month. Oh, wow. So like I was explaining to people in class this morning, every week, three out of five customers, no matter how long they've been doing it, we find threading issues on their equipment where mm -hmm. it's threaded wrong. And sometimes it's operators changing out, in and out, new operators. Information is always lost from the previous operator to the new mm -hmm. operator. Some information was taught wrong and taught wrong for a decade. Um, so like I explained to the people in class today, you know, I, they want to learn the buttons and they want to start sewing and see that it can actually make money. And, and that's great. But if it's threaded wrong and if you don't understand your bobbin case, you're putting your needles in backwards. It doesn't matter what buttons you know how oh, yeah. to push. The machine's not going to work. <laughs> and it's, it's funny that you said that because while you were talking about that, I was actually thinking about the other day. I was listening to one of our techs here and uh, he was explaining to somebody about their needle being backwards. And, you know, he had them on speakerphone and they were like, oh, I didn't even know that there was a way to put the needle in backwards. Yeah. And so it's even little things like that. And like you said, it's something if you're in a hurry, it doesn't matter if you've been doing it for a long time. If you're in a hurry, if you're not paying attention to those little details, you're going to start having those production issues. So it's really good to cover those basics. Absolutely. Um, and I think even for myself, you know, I come in here to stitch it and I, I really enjoy the climate and everything, but the whole world of embroidery is pretty new to me. Um, I, I've obviously grew up with like sewing and stuff, but embroidery is new. And so learning these things, even sitting in a little bit on the class myself, 
I, I'm picking up on a lot of things that I never would have even considered. Um, so I think it's good to have these these beginner classes and then even more like sometimes you you do webinars you do different things and educational resources and one thing that i've noticed whenever i talk to you is that you you really have like that desire and that passion to teach yeah. and it just it makes me kind of wonder you've been doing this for 32 years it, it's it's something about embroidery that draws you in and keeps you doing it every day so what is it that makes a difference to you and i'm i know that it's just you know, for most people, they look at it and it's, oh, it's hats and T-shirts, but it's more than that for you. So what is the importance of this industry for you? Uh, I have the advantage <clears throat> over even most technicians of the fact that I, I got to do production embroidery all through the 90s, from a single needle machine to a multi-needle to a multi-head machine. So there's, there's nothing I'm ever teaching somebody. Uh, I'm just teaching from my own experiences over the last few decades. Okay. Um, and again, you're right. I love the teaching side of this industry. I make the money repairing the machines, but that allows me to be able to go to conventions, to travel across the country, even into Canada and do shows and teach. You know, like uh, one is a maintenance class. You know, people love that class, you know, and I try to keep it light. I try to keep it funny. I try to keep people entertained because I don't want them to just learn. I want them to actually enjoy the class. Yep. I've been in seminars and webinars and it's literally like somebody is reading from a prompter or they're just reading the lines in their PowerPoint presentation. Yep. Death by PowerPoint. Death by PowerPoint. My PowerPoint is pictures for reference, one or two lines of information on the screen, and then I simply elaborate on that. And then no two webinars I ever or seminars I ever do, they're never the same. I've never done two exactly the same because I don't have anything scripted ever because my script goes by what questions the customers ask. Yep. I've had classes as small as, you know, six people this week for this beginner training class to, you know, last month in Atlantic City for the impression show, I had 124 people in the I Hate Hats class, you know, and, and that just goes in any direction that people yep. ask questions. And I just enjoy sharing my knowledge, my experience. And, you know, if somebody learns one thing that made their life easier and better and they're grateful for it, there's no better feeling in the world than oh, that. I None. agree. And I think that, you know, you said it yourself, you, you have a whole wide range, six people up to 126 people. Like that's a wide range. And me personally, I kind of like the smaller classrooms because you can sit down, you can have those conversations and stuff. And a lot of times you're able to have a little bit more direction and a little bit more focus on, okay, well, I've been getting a lot of questions about this. Let's focus on that. Okay. Um, and you were talking about doing the seminars. I know that you're coming to teach a seminar in Long Beach with us in June. Correct. And we've got a couple of different things going on. And I'm really personally excited for it. This is going to be the first expo that I've went to in June. And being able to sit under the proverbial learning tree. Because I've talked to you a couple of times over the past couple of days. And I know that there's just limitless amounts of information out there. Absolutely. And, and, and again, you know, if it, and you know, like the small workshops, I enjoy those too. Because it's more information. It's more knowledge sharing it's more hands-on the seminars are great and it's fun but I really do enjoy the workshops where people are actually getting up and touching the equipment you know oiling it themselves doing the hook timing yep. themselves I love doing the small advanced classes and you know you said we've discussed that and maybe something maybe we'll start doing here at stitch it sometime in the future to start offering that advanced class so instead of just the basics of learning people are going to be coming in with you know different equipment years of experience that just want to do better do hey. more I like that because that's one thing I've already discovered even in just a few months being here at Stitch It is there's always something new. There, there's always a, a new style. There's always a, a new way of applicate, applicating. Yes, applicating. <laughs> there, there's always a, a new way of applying things and there's different approaches that you can use. So for you, you've obviously been in the apparel industry for a while. What is it that drew you more to embroidery more so than the other forms of apparel decoration? Uh, money. Uh, that's fair. <laughs> Supply, demand. Um, you know, most people know if you're in this industry, I mean, the, you know, for qualified technicians and people that travel, 
it, it, it's a difficult job. And the reason being to be a technician <clears throat> is not an easy life. You have to commit to being gone from your family. You might as well be a truck driver. Oh yeah. Because most of our customers refer to us as truck drivers that just happens to know how to fix an embroidery machine. Because we may only work 16 to 24 hours a week for customers, but we're spending another 30 hours driving or traveling to get to those oh, customers. I can't even imagine because I know that was one of the things that me and you was talking about with you coming out to the June show mm -hmm. is you were like, hey, like we have to make it worth it. We have to give quality. We have to give like value to the customers, to the people that aren't customers that are just stopping by because you're coming out of Tampa and that's in Long Beach. So it, you're you're traveling the entire country and it's purely just because you want to teach people. Yeah. And yeah, the money is there and I get that. But let's be real here. You can make better money doing other things. I could make more money staying at home and servicing machines okay. and, you know, not be gone from my family and my grandchildren that week. But the truth is, I love teaching. Yep. I don't mind traveling at all. It doesn't bother me in the slightest little bit. But one of the biggest things I enjoy at my age, and as long as I've been doing this, is passing on the knowledge that I've accumulated over the years. And I tell everybody, I don't have all the answers. I have a lot. But I don't have them all. And if I don't, I actually know people that's been doing this longer than me. So I'll find the answer. <laughs> and, you know, that's something actually I really like about you because we talked yesterday and there were several things that I asked you and you were like, you know what, I'm not sure. And then you was like, hey, let me text this person or let me look at this conversation. I remember, you know, we was yeah. talking about this the other day and it's like there's just that limitless resource of experience mm -hmm. that every manual in the world, you can read it and it's only going to teach you the the specifics of yeah. the technical side but then it's like okay well you know yeah i may be getting this error code but now i also have to deal with now i'm getting a little bit backed up on orders and stuff and so it's like when you call somebody not only do you want to make sure that your problem is solved you want to make sure that they understand the issue that you're going through and they they have that kind of compassion and i, I think it really shows through when you're teaching people when you're doing these seminars when you're doing these workshops when you're doing your technical work that you actually care and i think that that's something a lot of other technicians that you see out there any industry this is just in general a lot of technicians are like hey i'm here to collect a paycheck i'm here to fix your machine yeah. but i can tell by talking to you that you genuinely care is yeah. there anything that you've done or experienced in your career that like you were like this is the moment this is why i do what i do i mean truthfully <clears throat> When you fix somebody's machine, especially if I'm following up after, you know, people working on it themselves, thinking they're trying to fix a problem, normally they're putting band-aids on a situation that's only going to get worse. But, you know, when you make it work and it's running the way it should, and I'm talking a machine that's, you know, 15, 16 years old, you know, and it's running as good as it was the day it was made and mm -hmm. the smile on their face. And when they write a check for a thousand dollars for a day of service, they enjoy writing that check. And when they can hand you a thousand dollars and say, thank you three times all at the exact same time, it's worth it. Uh, the seminars, I love seminars because there's so many questions that people have, whether it's a small group or a large group after a seminar, I usually never spend no less then I would say 30 minutes, people line up to ask very specific questions, machine questions or issues or digitizing or design or application or backing or, or whatever the question is. I mean, to the point that sometimes I've got to get out of that seminar room because somebody else is coming in within 45 minutes mm -hmm. that they're following me in the hallway, still asking the questions. I'll be like, excuse me for a minute. I got to go to the bathroom because you know, I've been in the seminar for oh, two yeah. hours. I've had a few bottles of water. You know, and, you know, even though sometimes it, it's it's kind of odd that they're still waiting for me when I come out of the bathroom, but it's flattering at the same time. Oh, yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's funny because, like, you were telling me yesterday, you were saying that a lot of times whenever you teach these classes and stuff, they're like, you're the last person to leave the property because people just want to stay. They want to talk. They want to learn. They want yeah. you provide that value. And I've never once heard of you even so much as getting short with somebody because it's something that you enjoy Absolutely. and it's not that I doubted you, but it was just like, man, there's six people in this class. Like, like how long could they really keep bill, you know? But then like I had to go over there and it was like, okay, like we, we have a, a schedule that we have to keep. And yeah. I was supposed to spend over at four. You come and get me at four twenty. but they had questions. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's funny because to me, like, again, being new to the embroidery industry myself, 
when you first see an embroidery machine, your first thought is it's a sewing machine. And the truth and, is, it is. And it is. That but then you realize is. there's so much more to it. When you're talking about a machine that may have 12, 12 needles or 15 needles or sometimes even mm -hmm. two or four or eight heads, it adds such a level of complication to it. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily realize that. So people getting into the industry for the very first time, never done any embroidery before, what piece of advice would you give them to get started? And this is something I do cover in a, in a seminar. It's literally, that's uh, I do a seminar, it's called The Cost of Embroidery. <clears throat> and it's designed for new people in the industry. Um, it's a class I've done for about a couple of years now. And it's designed that when you're at a show, there's a lot of people there to get information, knowledge. You know, first thing I tell them is never be pressured to buy at the show, okay? Because if you're in sales of any kind, I don't care if it's embroidery equipment or cars or whatever, that sales rep's job is to close that deal. Yep. Never fall for the, you know, if you go ahead and pay your 10% down, you can have this show special. That show special will still be there next month, I guarantee it. Do your homework, do your research. Yep. Sometimes it's not even, is this the right machine for me? Sometimes it's like, where's my closest technician live oh and that's a, a big thing especially huge. depending on like for us we are the sole distributor for swf coast to coast coast to coast that, yeah. so that's a huge range and there's times that you know if we're just honest there there's not enough text to go around Never and is. so when you make that phone call sometimes you have to be like okay well what's the turnaround time on this but then on the flip side of that coin it's okay this machine was super cheap there's a million people out there to work on it. So I'm going to jump all over that. But then within the first week that you have it, you're already having issues. And so you really have to balance that cost versus benefit in the long run. And believe it or not, just, you know, to, to point out about having the issues, whether you're new or experienced or anything else, you know, I love it when during the seminars because people <clears throat> always have, because I have to be non-brand specific mm -hmm. when I'm at an industry show. I cannot just say, oh, I love this machine so much. I love this brand. I love this, whatever. I have to be very neutral and my classes apply to all equipment. Mm -hmm. I really don't care which one you own because I'm an independent. I work for no company other than myself. Yep. Um, but at the end of the day, what it boils down to customers will ask to be like, well, you know, what's your favorite machine? I'll be like, well, there's several good machines out there. I couldn't say there's just one. And, but then they try to get tricky on me. And the trick is, is uh, which machine do you got to work on the most? Uh, oh, slick, right? So I point to them and they, and I point to them and they're like, and they already had the conversation and they're like, oh, you own a Melco machine. So he's like, oh, is it Melco? No, it's not Melco's. So I point at him again and he's like, but I have a Melco. Uh, that's not the point. The point is me and my guys, we don't fix machines. We fix operators. That's true. Because if all operators knew what I know, I would be out of business. You know, that, that kind of reminds me of that whole, like, uh, doctors don't cure people, they just treat people. Yep. Where it's, hey, I can teach you and I can teach you how to fix any machine, but that's where that kind of cost comes in and stuff. Because I've personally, just since being in here, I have seen a, a major difference in quality between carriers, but sometimes that cost is different. Sometimes, you know, like we were talking about with the availability of technicians, there's so many different variables. And somebody in one of our Facebook comments, uh, even just the other day, they said, there's so many options out there. How do I know which one's the best? And a lot of times the early bird gets the worm, like that mindset of, oh, I saw that one first, I'm gonna go for that one. But it really is important to do your research and to make sure you're making a well-informed decision. And that's regardless of who the, the manufacturer is. So for people that are just starting out, what are some of those things, those key points of research that you would suggest people look at when they're making that decision? Perfect example was today. I've got, uh, you know, one lady's had her machine for two years. One lady's had her machine for a year. They've been scared to use it. The one thing neither one of them ever did. So to date is go to training class. To me, it's all about education and communication. If you can do those two things, you can be successful. Now I can buy the nicest car in the world, but if I don't know how to drive, what value is that car to me? It's true. And it's the same with your embroidered equipment. I have people all the time at trade shows, they'll be like, well, I'm gonna invest in this and go ahead and get this and that's great. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, 
when are you going to do the training class? You know, when you're doing your install, the two day install and say a brand new six head machine that costs sixty, sixty five thousand dollars, you know, can you close that business for two days or do not disturb? Can you put your phone on silent? You know, and I start hearing the stories about, well, I'm not going to be able to do that for a while because I got to, you know, I have a li an aunt that lives with me. I take care of her. You know, I, I, I do daycare for my grandchildren and stuff. And I'm like, that's wonderful. You're a good person. I know this. But the next sentence out of my mouth is, if you don't have time for the education, whether it's the, the travel and the time and the money and the resources, please don't waste your money buying equipment right now because you're not ready. That's true. And you, you really have to be informed because one of the things that really blew me away when looking at these machines is they are very technologically advanced now. Um, yeah. you, you think embroidery and you think the old school is the hand stitching or just the manual machines, but everything is so automated and there's so much that goes into it that you really do need that training before making a decision. And that's one thing that I enjoy that we offer here. And you said it best yesterday, whenever we were talking, you, you said that those classes are something that we owe to our customers. It's something that they paid for. It's something they deserve. And if we truly want to give them the full picture and give them the ability to use those machines, that this is something that they deserve to have because they've put in that money and they've put in that time already that a lot of people don't really think about that and the continuing education that goes into it because you have software updates, you have new styles that come out that you have to approach. And so the time commitment is huge. If, if you were to put a number on, let's say quarterly, how many hours do you think you personally would put into expanding your knowledge of embroidery in order to continue your success? I don't think you could put a time limit or restraint on it. Um, I think if you have the advantage to attend a seminar or a workshop or a trade show, for example, um, if something's coming up, it's it's more local or something. Perfect example today with the with the people we had in class, only six people. It's three com four companies, right? Um, I, I informed that you know I'm going to be back up here. I'm going to fly back home to Tampa on Saturday. I'm going to work a couple of days, um, and then I'm going to fly back up to Chicago because um, we have the DAC show next weekend at Tenley Park. Um, I'm going to hang out when I'm not doing the seminars. I'll be hanging out in the Stitch It booth. So, you know, questions, information's free for me. I don't charge for knowledge yep. ever. Now, if I show up at your door, you're going to pay me. That's true. That's, <laughs> That's true. fair. And for the record, I would like to say that by the time this podcast episode is aired, that Dax Chicago show will have already passed. It will. So we do have that to consider. But by the time this episode drops, the next time that you can see Bill at one of the Stitch It booths is going to be that June show sure, in sure. Long Beach. And yep. that is a graphics pro show. So you can yep. find all of our information on there. But, but, but that's the same finish, thing. But, but to finish your question, out of those four companies today, two of them are already registered and signed up for my seminars next weekend because they're local here. And that's only a four and a half hour drive. Yep. I told them, if you go there, because those seminars are going to be a little more advanced than what they're learning in just their basics class, so they're going to get more knowledge. Is it going to cost them travel to get there? Yeah. Hotel to stay there? Yeah. The class is inexpensive, 35 40 bucks. Are they going to spend money to do that? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't care if they spend a few hundred, a few thousand. If they learn one thing that makes them more successful, that makes their job easier, more production, it was worth every oh, penny. Absolutely. To me, it's a no brainer. Even if a class costs a hundred dollars to attend, if you can turn around and use that knowledge to make a thousand on your first big order, I mean, you've already tenfold paid for it. And I think that you put it best a second ago. You said it's an investment. Always. A lot of people want to look at it as it's a cost, but it's an investment because the money that you're putting into this industry, <clears throat> if you're willing to put in the work, and invest your time and that money, you're going to see the return. Absolutely. And one of the downsides of our industry, there's there can be a lot of turnover, especially when it comes from to machine operators. So, you know, when I'm teaching like the cost of embroidery classes and things like this, the biggest expense for any company, and it doesn't matter if it's Stitch It, it's BG Tech Services, it's, you know, whatever the company is, your biggest expense is always labor. Mm -hmm. Time is our enemy. Right. But it's labor. It's not this building. It's not the it's, you know, it's not it's everything's a cost, but it's labor. 
So your biggest cost is going to be your employee. And I deal with this a lot with the, some of the bigger, medium-sized shops. You know, they have a lot of turnaround with employees and stuff. Believe it or not, it's actually good for business. Um, my business, not theirs. Because <laughs> new employees make the same mistakes over and over. over and over. So they have no choice but to pay us. And we come back again and again. So even though that labor is your biggest expense, when you find the right employee, that employee is also your best asset. Oh, 100% agree. So best advice I can give you, when you find that right employee, you better pay them well so they're not going anywhere. Yep. And that's one thing that I've found, uh, which I come from a marketing background, obviously, but that's one of the things that I've found there is that's another industry that has a lot of high turnover because it's it's a stressful job. Owning a business is a stressful position to be in. Yes, it is. And, <laughs> you know, there's so many times um, I, I have my own company and I have a team that works with me and I'm responsible for a lot, even on a smaller scale. So for some of those medium, larger size companies where you're talking about hundreds of employees or sometimes even thousands of employees, that one employee can make all the difference in the world. And if you get that one person to, to buy in, so to speak, they can influence the people around you. So if you were to, if you were right now, 30 second elevator pitch mm -hmm. about why somebody should buy into the embroidery industry, what would that be? Freedom. If you want to start your own business, you're looking at the embroidery business. I've got a lot of customers that, you know, they'll start it part time. It winds up putting their kids through college. Maybe they're burned out. They, you know, they've been a teacher for 20 years. You know, industries change, counties change, policies change, school boards change. Um, no matter what field you're in, if you're looking for something additional, extra to do, think about it. Everybody wears apparel. Yep. Every sign, I was thinking about it last night in the hotel. I went outside, it was raining, it was a little cold. I wasn't happy. I'm from Tampa, Florida. Okay, I'm in Missouri right now. But That's all right, hang out for a couple hours, the weather will and change. And just one block between looking at the signs, and I mean between Burger King, Walmart, the shopping plaza across the street, within a one block radius, I counted 25 signs. And one block, that is 25 logos that's waiting to be embroidered on a polo shirt. Yep. There is more than enough business to go around. I've never seen a city, a state, or a town that's oversaturated. People are like, oh, that's my competition. I've never seen anybody go out of business because there's too many embroiderers in Cape Girardeau. That's fair. You see what I mean? I have uh, several friends that work in the embroidery industry and with just any sort of apparel decoration. And it, I always kind of laugh because of that. Because the, the one girl in particular, she said, oh, that's my competitor from across town. And it's like, you stay so busy that your orders are backed up. So yeah. are they really a competitor or they, are they, they just should, somebody They should actually that, communicate because there's probably some things that they could learn from each other. I'm sure they there is. share jobs. You know, a smaller shop likes dealing with the bigger shop. Bigger shop doesn't want to take the little orders. Yeah. They'd love to give the little orders to the small shop. The small shop don't have the time or the resources to take the big order. So give it to the big shop as a contract job. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, you got communication. You got education, right? And everybody's making money. So there's always enough work to go around. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, a lot of people starting this industry is a part-time job. But I tell people all the time, be careful what you wish for. Because in our industry, believe it or not, when you get in the apparel and you're selling the shirts and the hats and the tote bags, and you don't limit yourself to anything. The rule is if you can hoop it, you can sew it right? It's true. Some people have a niche market, whether it's just hats or whether it's just aprons or beanies. It's Everybody has, some people have a niche market, but at the end of the day, don't limit yourself um, because this business is as little or as much as you want to take away from it. And when I started my own business 14 years ago, when I started BG Tech Services, um, it was me, my pickup truck, and I called three customers that I, I knew over the years. And I just made a comment and I was like, if I started my own service company, would you like me to service your machines? All three of their responses in three different states was how fast could I get there? They didn't want to schedule me later or give me a They yes. wanted you right then and there. They wanted me now. Now, fast forward 14 years later, I've had my ups and downs, roller coaster ride, but as a business owner, is it easy? No. Would I ever go back to not being a business owner? No, I would not. I would not give it up in a million years but 
you know, fast forward 14 years, I've been as high as seven employees. I have five employees right now. I've got multiple vehicles. Uh, me and the, the guys I have right now, we travel on average combined about 185,000 miles a year. Um, and I've been successful, so I can't blame. <clears throat> been blessed for sure. But again, just like the embroidery business, you can start with a single head. You might buy a second one. I tell people all the time, when you get to where you're sewing after midnight, um, the solution isn't hiring somebody else to help and pay a second shift because equipment is far cheaper than labor. You buy another machine. Oh, yeah. Because machines, on average, a $20,000 single head at, what, 2,080 working hours in a year, 40 hours yep. a week, a $20,000 machine works for exactly $1 an hour. Guarantee you, you'll never find an employee that'll work that cheap. That's true. And a good operator can run up to six heads, no problem by themselves. So again, just be careful what you mm -hmm. wish for, because in our industry, and the apparel side of it, nobody does advertising. It is all word of mouth. That's Every true. bit of it. You do a good job at a fair price for a customer, they're going to tell ten people. You know, whenever I uh, first got into marketing, I had actually had a background in graphic design before that, and I ran into that a lot. Uh, People talk about, oh, if you're trying to get clients, you get a cold call and all this stuff. And there was probably a three year period where I never once had to try to reach out to somebody and request it. But it's because you put out quality work, yep. you put out stuff consistently, you follow through on your word, you're going to grow. And then that word of mouth is going to come right. in. And I think it's funny that you said, be careful what you wish for, because here at Stitch It, one of the things we've really been like, focusing on lately is we want to make sure that we're there before the sale during the sale after, after the sale, sale for the life of the machine yep. and and grow and i'm not going to get into any like <clears throat> sales pitches or anything but you know we do have like that trade-up program where you can get 80 percent within the first two years but the main reason is because we see so many customers that they start out with like an mas 12 or an mas 15 and then next thing you know they've got so many orders rolling in that it's like okay well i've got to go to a multi-hit and it is very much it's you're really only limited by the amount of work that you're willing to put Absolutely. in and so if you have a passion for it it just takes off before you know it yeah i mean there's there's and there's nothing wrong with growing with your customer base i mean there's nothing wrong with that i've got customers that i started with even before i owned my own company and i'm talking 20 years ago that were started out with two machines and it was a mom and pop operation in the garage fast forward 20 years you know they're in a they're in a warehouse facility they've got 20 employees they've got 50 heads of embroidery you know they went from literally you know starting out starting sales maybe the second year doing a hundred thousand dollars you know business wise total sales to fast forward 20 years they're a they're a 3.5 million dollar company and that's just that's insane to me like for for anybody I would think by any metric of success to go from your garage to a three and a half million dollar business, that's successful. It takes time. Oh, of I course. mean, and now some people do it way faster than others, mm -hmm. but most people take their time and learn. And to me, again, it, it all boils down to the education. If you do a good job and you, you don't have to be the cheapest in town. Don't ever feel like you have to be giving stuff away. You never have to be the cheapest. It's all customer service. If you provide a good quality product at a fair price, but more importantly, you treat that customer with respect, they will never shop around. They don't, they won't look for a cheaper price. They respect you in return and they're just going to bring you more business and tell more people about you. You know, and that's a, a phrase you hear a lot in marketing is people don't buy from businesses. They buy from people. Yep. And so it's like, if you put your money where your mouth is, and for you, it's education. It's your technical work. You back it up with quality work. You back it up with quality education. And there's a reason why Bill Garvin is a well-known name in the embroidery industry. And it's because you do follow through. And it's something that you take seriously. It's something that you take pride in. And like you said, different people grow at different rates, but you're still kind of that same thing you're only limited by the amount of work that you were willing to put in yeah. and the biggest part of that work continued education Always. continuing to learn continuing to stay on top of Til things the day and that's we where die going. absolutely so the day we die so what would you say since doing this from the 90s what was that one moment where you were just like wow like this 
this has gone from something that I just do for a living to this is my life. I don't know. Ask me in 10 years. I'm not done yet. Fair. Fair. Um, life happens differently for everybody. For me, it was, you know, started out as a manual screen printer uh, in a business. The operator of the machine quit and they say, you want to try embroidery? I'm 19 years old. I'm, I'll try anything once. I will. Fast forward uh, three decades. Uh, guess what I'm doing now? Hey, technically, you still just tried once. I mean, yeah, I tried once, and I failed horribly <laughs> for the first year. And this is a joke I love telling in class. The first year I did embroidery, I got fired four times because I ruined so many products. I had no clue of what I was doing, and it was lack of education. I had a manual of four pages thick, an owner that never even knew where the on button was on the embroidery machine. So it was, it was, it was insane. I mean, it got to the point if somebody was ordering twelve shirts, we were ordering thirty-six to complete the order. I mean, that's how much money was being lost. He would get upset. We would argue. He would fire me. I would go home. Imagine this is the early 90s. I didn't have a cell phone. Yep. Had an answering machine. His wife would call and leave a message. It was an hour drive home. Every time before I would get home, Bill, you know how Carl is. Could you please come back in the morning? We will work this out. And what worked out to my advantage was even though I was making mistakes, I wasn't trained enough to not know how to make those mistakes. Yep. And Nancy, bless her heart, every time I'd show up the next morning and she'd give me a raise and apologize for Carl. So the fourth time I got fired, I didn't call back for two days and I got a huge raise. There you go. That's what I was getting ready to say. If you're, <laughs> if you're getting a raise every time, I'd say fire me a few more times <laughs> if that's how that works. Now, the year after that, the, that next spring, we went to the first trade show convention I ever got to see. I'm 20 years old at this point in my life and I'm watching these machines and they change and thread by themselves, right? And they were cutting threads by themselves. I started on a single needle machine. A single needle. Oh, manual switch with over and no everything. No trims. No trimmers. Right? So I'm at a trade show watching this machine. And it's cutting thread by itself. And it's changing colors by itself. The owner comes and finds me. I'm staring at this, at this machine for four hours. My mind is just blown. So my aha moment was that convention in Charlotte, North Carolina, third, three decades ago. Because... All I knew was in a little shop in Covington, Virginia, this single needle machine. As far as I was concerned, at 19 years old, I was the only person in the country doing embroidery. Yep. Right? This machine blew my mind. The owner finds me. He's like, you ready to go? And I was like, no, absolutely not. He said, what do you mean? I said, because if you don't buy one of those, I quit. There you go. You're yeah. going to have to fire me a fifth time. <laughs> and, you know, we talked about it a little bit. It was a four-hour drive back to Virginia. And, you know, I thought, you know, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen at all. And uh, Monday morning, this was a Saturday. Monday morning, he calls me in his office. He said, Bill, are you serious about that? And I said, Carl, i got so much information from these people. They're going to give us, you know, three days of training at their facility. I said, I, I need that. And I said, from what I saw that machine do, I mean, I could produce so much more, mm -hmm. so much faster. That when I got to finally go to that first training class, and it wound up being three days because they added some editing software on mm -hmm. it, so it wound up being a five-day class. Oh, wow. When somebody was explaining to me what I've been doing wrong for over a year, it was like somebody turned the light bulb on in my head. And from that day forward, I was a beast yep. in sewing. So I, I have to ask, business-wise for them, for that employer, mm -hmm. When you had your aha moment, how did it affect their business? Tripled. So, I mean, it kind of sounds like to me what we was talking about earlier, where it just, it took that one person to really buy in and to decide this is it. So being that one person for yourself and now 30 plus years later, you're still doing it you still have a passion for it and everything yeah. like that i think that that really kind of shows just that difference the a little bit of education and one person that's willing to do it and you train these people all day i'm sure that you see people that pick it up really really fast you see yeah. people that it's a little bit more of a struggle but at the end of the day a lot of times those people that struggle a little bit more end up being more successful because they've worked harder they've really put into it yeah. and they they i'm not going to say that they didn't get bored with it but it's it's kind of like you where it's like man i've struggled with this for a while but then boom you get that education and you're just like it clicks and everybody learns at a different scale yep. a different rate no two people do things exactly the same but as long as they come up with the same result and they're successful that's great and like you saying for that aha moment 
the example was is that sporting goods store had that one single needle machine for over 10 years in embroidery from the time that we got the six needle machine from the time i left that company seven years later it was up to seven heads of embroidery heads of embroidery that's how much the education side of that grew that sporting good business when it come to apparel that's, a, that's impressive yeah seven seven like. heads think about it probably 12 years in business with a single needle single head machine and after that first six needle and the training class and the best part of that story is is we had that machine for three months before we was even able to get into that training class that's how backed up the classes was mm -hmm. the owner every single week was trying to uncrate the machine because he just knows how much money it costs and he's wanting to put it to work so i would go get his wife and say nancy carl's trying to open the machine again and she'd say well you know how carl is no she would she <laughs> would go walking over and say carl leave it alone go back to your office because i told him i'm not touching the machine i know what i've done wrong how bad i've been for the last year trying to sew right um i'm not touching that machine until i go to that training class you know and i think honestly that's probably the biggest thing that helped with their growth is instead of just rushing into it and learning bad habits take and just time. winging it you were like no we're going to take the time we're going to do this properly so it it really showed that attention to education that you had even before you were an educator absolutely and as as we're narrowing in on the last few minutes of this um i just i have to ask when you teach, when you educate people about these machines, what is it about just, I'm trying to think of the best way to even ask this, like when you're teaching these classes and you have people that are just struggling sometimes, they're, they're just not grasping the concepts or whatever, I'm sure it probably gets frustrating sometimes, but like I said, I've, I've never heard of you losing your cool or anything like that. So what do you kind of tell yourself when it comes down to, I understand this is going to take a little bit of time. I explain it to people in my seminars all the time. I've been in your shoes. I, I kind of figured, yep. I've been in your shoes. There's nothing that you've done, messed up, tore up, shirt-wise, equipment-wise, machine-wise, that I haven't already done myself and beat myself up over. So just always put yourself in somebody else's shoes. I've been there. I know what it felt like to not know, to, to make the mistakes. So I don't look down on anybody. Some people learn at a, at a different rate. Today, we were just threading a bobbin correctly. And all the lady took a little bit longer than the others. And I, again, I'm not getting upset with her or anything else. I show her, I make her do it again. And then, you know, I, I take it apart and, and make her do it again. It's, it's repetition, you know, and, and that's how you learn. It's yep. learned by repetition. <clears throat> and then you know, the third time I did it, she's like, well, you took it apart again. I said, yes, ma'am, I can do it all day long. I need you to do it. Yep. That's all it boils down to. You with that muscle I mean? memory and that repetition yeah. and the fourth and... time she did it she did it right she put it in the machine and she got an applause from everybody else in the class made her feel great that's awesome because i mean everybody likes feeling appreciated exactly and i kind of had a feeling a little bit of a sneaky suspicion that you were going to say it was because you had made those mistakes yourself Been too there, done that but it that perspective of compassion makes a huge difference Absolutely. and i think that that's one thing me and you really seem to vibe on is even with the marketing side coming in here to stitch it uh, i really appreciate how much they do care and how, how much when you talk to the other employees the salespeople, the support even all the way up to dylan the ceo like they, they genuinely care about other people it's not even about the bottom line or anything like that and i think that probably similar case for you when you're teaching people it, it's you're not thinking about how much money that they're going to make at the end of the day. You're, you're not thinking about the success of their business. You're thinking about the individual. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why we get along so well is because it's about the face behind the business. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So I think that's actually probably a good little segue. You know, I'm going to have to have you back at some point. I would say probably the next time you come up for training, we'll probably end up making this a regular occurrence. Cause... I will still be bald. So we're good. <laughs> There you go. I'm, I'm getting there. So <laughs> <laughs> one of these days, I'll catch up to you, Bill. Oh, yeah. But otherwise, your tech company, um, 
for a little bit of a, a cheap plug. Do you have a, a website, phone number, email address, oh, anything I mean, people uh, can get a hold of you at? BGTechServices.net. All of our information is on there. I help as many people as I can, as much as I can, but keep in mind, for what we do in the industry, there is a shortage. So we do have a backlog. We stay booked out on average about six to eight weeks. Now, I am flexible, especially for my own customer base. Um, <clears throat> and again, if we go back, we're talking you know, about 14 years. I started with me and a pickup truck and three customers. I have an active customer base now of close to 1,500 clients on the East Coast. Okay, majority of those are an annual PM service. Not majority, I'd say about half are. The others are the mom and pops or the Caribbean where they only have us come down every few years or so or take care of their equipment or wait till it gets so bad they have no choice. <laughs> yep, that type happens a of lot. Situation. So again, information's always free. You can find all of your information. Um, you know, if you can attend the trade shows and stuff, that's that's one of the best places to, to find me, meet me, get educated by me type of situation. Um, you know, we discussed maybe doing some more advanced classes and stuff here too, where, you know, people from around the industry can come and, and get more education mm -hmm. and more learning because there's a shortage of that in our industry. I agree. Um, unfortunately, you know, I've said this for years is, you know, machine companies are not in the education business. They're actually not in the service business. They are in the equipment selling business. Yep. But if you don't supply the service and the education, you can't support the sales. Oh, and that's I agree. what it boils down to. I agree. And I think that that's one of the things for me, which first off, I want to mention that you was talking about people going years without it and yeah. they just didn't have a choice but to call somebody. So for anybody watching or listening, make sure you maintain your machines. That's the easiest tip of the day. One, make one sure of, you're following through with that and you're going to have to call Bill S. One of my favorite <laughs> jokes in my seminars is, is this, okay? Three minutes of maintenance twice a day on your equipment is far cheaper than this 300 pound technician showing up at your house. That's fair. Far cheaper. That's fair. Okay. Paying time and not in money. That's it. But, all right. So we are going to have to go ahead and call a close to this episode. And I appreciate you guys joining us for our debut episode of The Insider. Right. I'm Corey Bacon for Stitch it International. This is Bill Garvin of BG, BG Tech, Tech Services. Services. Thank you, Corey. It's good having you. It, yep. Thank you. Thank you.